Hello and welcome to our new video of our series We Digitalize Our Production. In today's video we show you how we create a manual pallet check with Peakboard. How this works you see now. I'll start by adding my heading, as well as three rectangles where we're later going to display information about the current pallet, the destination of the pallet, and information for loading the pallet. Then I can move on to start referencing all of my information, which we're going to be loading from the SQL server. For that, I'm going to set up a data source for my customer data, where I'm going to load all of the entries from the customer table. Next, I'll set up a data source for the current orders, where I'm going to reference the top 1000 rows from the order header table, sorted by date. Now, in order to filter the current orders out of here, I'm going to create a data flow that is first going to filter for the active and created order types. After that, I'll connect these to my customer data and then also sort the orders by their status and the date that they were created. This way, the first order in this data flow will always be the active order. Now, I'm going to create an OPC UA data source in which I'll read out the information coming from my pallet conveyor system. After I've entered the server URL, I can simply load the endpoint. Then, once I've selected my client certificate, I can establish a connection to the OPC UA server. Once that's done, I can set up my subscriptions. Here, I start by selecting the values ready for target, current target, and shipping accepted. These are the ones that I'll later want to either read or write. After I've finished adding the data source, I want to display the values on the screen. To do that, I'm going to create text boxes that are going to show to which destination the current pallet is being routed. So to the three loading gates, or to the high bay storage. I'm going to set up conditional formatting that will change the color of the text box under a number of specific conditions. This will help to show exactly where the pallet is going. We want to be able to send a confirmation to the conveyor system via the click of a button if the destination for a pallet is accepted. For that, I'm going to create a button and a script that will set a variable to true in the OPC UA using set variable to confirm that the pallet can proceed. Now, in order to show the contents of the pallet, I'm going to set up a JSON data source which will access the REST API of the merchandise management system. Here, the cargo can be read out via the pallet number, which is sent from the conveyor system. For that, I'm first going to enter the URL of the server that hosts the system. For the path, I'll make a script that combines a static text with whatever variable value the OPC UA data source returns. Now, I'll be able to see which values are returned for the pallet that's currently active in the system. Next, we'll connect this data to our screen. For that, I'll add a picture of the load carrier, three of which can fit on a pallet. By default, I'm just going to pick blue here and then add the other colors that should appear on the pallet via conditional formatting. If the pallet is empty, none of the elements should be displayed. With that, I'm finished with today's visualization for pallet control. What you can see here is the current load of our pallet. Also, you can check to which gate it should be shipped. If you are fine with that, you can click on the accept button. Thanks for watching. In our next video, we show you the overview of our three loading gates. See you then.